Praise the Lord. Welcome to this international prayer meeting. I greet you all, brothers and sisters, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's turn to the Word of God this day and we'll be meditating upon Psalm 16 and a couple of verses from there. Praise the Lord. Psalm 16 and verses 8 and 9. Psalm 16 and verses 8 and 9. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices, my flesh also will rest in hope. That word hope is something that we all think about. And we, when we read the books of wisdom like Job and Psalms and Proverbs, this word is mentioned so many times in those books, hope. And here the psalmist he expresses his confidence in God. He says, I have set the Lord always before me. The secret to having a successful life, hope in our lives, deliverance in our life, healing in our life, peace in our hearts, comfort in our lives is setting the Lord always before us. Praise the Lord. David, who has written this psalm or sang this psalm, he says that this is the secret to my flesh being, you know, my flesh resting in hope. You know, while we live in this world, there are all kinds of problems that comes into our lives. Trials, tribulations, sicknesses, weaknesses and lot of other problems. Each of us, even this morning, we are going through different kind of problems in our lives. The thing is, when we fix our eyes on Jesus, as here David says, keeping the Lord always before us, continually. A man after God's own heart, as we heard this morning, you know, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. It's a learning process for each one of us as believers and ministers of Jesus Christ, only when we keep the Lord always before us and when He is always at our right hand, we shall not be moved. And then He says that my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh, He says, my flesh, it also will rest in hope. Praise the Lord. I just want to exhort you this morning, if you are going through difficult times, that you know, God is there with you continually. As we read in the word of God, Jesus is God with us, Emmanuel, at all times. Through all the ups and downs of our lives, all of us are going through different kinds of problems in our lives. Praise the Lord. But when we focus on Christ, you know, when we focus on the cross, when you think about Jesus and all that he suffered for us, we know that we also can overcome all those things that we are going through. That's why the Bible says that we are overcomers and then we read in the book of Revelation that he who overcomes, he will receive all these great blessings. In the word of God, in the book of Revelation, we read that he who overcomes, he who overcomes, praise the Lord. And God wants each one of us to be overcomers. And there are many times in our life where we are, you know, in despair and there are so many distresses, we are frustrated because of so many things that keep happening in our lives. When we read the book of Job, and that's a wonderful book that is there, placed in the word of God, because God knows that many of us go through the similar problems, not all the problems that Job went through, but many of the problems that he went through in his life, like sicknesses, like loss, like destruction coming in, in his life, all those things in several junctures in our lives we also go through. When we read the book of Job, we can get our hope renewed that there is a God who restores us. Praise the Lord. When we pray to Him, when we worship Him, when we meditate on His word, He is there to bring restoration in our lives. Job chapter 6 and verse 11 onwards, Job laments, he says, What strength do I have that I should hope? And he is a man who is devastated, destroyed in every way in his life. All his children have been you know, killed and all that he had has been taken away, destroyed by Satan and then his body is afflicted, he doesn't have peace of mind, his friends come and start complaining against him and accusing him. And then Job laments and he says, what strength do I have that I should hope? Why should there be any kind of hope in my life? Because I'm going through all these things. What is my end that I should prolong my life? Sometimes, you know, even believers, they get suicidal thoughts. They think that it is better to finish off you know, my life, why, why should I keep living like this? It's not only the unbelievers, but the believers also get such kinds of thoughts in their minds. Why should I live anymore? I am not receiving any answers from God. God is not answering my prayers. Things are not changing. Why should I live like this? And that is what Job says here. What is my end that I should prolong my life? What is his need to live a long life? Is my strength the strength of stones or is my flesh bronze? Is my help not within me? 
and his success driven from me he was a very successful man he epitome of success during his days he had everything he had a good family he had riches cattle everything he had but everything was taken away from him and then satan afflicted his body also with sores from the from the top of his head to his uh, feet and he was suffering a lot praise the lord and he had a lot of mental anguish and there are some of you who are going through different kinds of mental anguish because of family problems finances you know so many things and then he says to him who is afflicted kindness should be shown by his friend even though he forsakes the fear of the almighty and he is saying that you are the people who should comfort me he wanted comfort from his family sometimes you may search for comfort from your loved ones from your spouse the ones who are very near to you but you may not find it and that is what brings the greatest mental anguish in our lives when your husband when your wife when your children they don't speak well with you they don't understand you they speak against you and he says that to him who is afflicted kindness should be shown by his friend my brothers have dealt deceitfully like a brook like the streams of the brooks that pass away praise the lord he had no one to comfort him and he was not finding comfort from god himself praise the lord what do you do in such a situation when you are going through such things where do you hope what do you hope in at least we have the word of god with us during job's time he did not have the word of god he did not have something to meditate on they used to pray and worship god you know they had not seen anything they they don't have so much of knowledge as we have regarding god we have the old testament we have the new testament they did not have anything job did not have anything yet he was hoping in the lord though he was devastated in his life still he had that kind of a hope and trust in god but during the times of you know depression that he went through mental anguish that he went through he says i have no hope in my life why should i live any longer i mean you look at the people uh, around you in different countries i must tell you there are people who are suffering more than you are suffering praise the lord in war torn areas just think about what is going on in ukraine and how the people are suffering there living in bunkers thinking about the next moment whether they would be destroyed by another missile hitting them or another bomb coming and hitting the shelters think about what has happened in turkey and in syria how the people are living there what you would, what if you had been living there what if you were born there just think about the people who are there at this time they are going through distress they are going through times when they don't have anything to eat at all many countries are devastated by famines they don't have anything at all to eat praise the lord but god is merciful if you if you you know had a good night's rest yesterday and you had some food to eat praise the lord hallelujah as we heard this day with a grateful heart you know praise the lord with all your heart this morning hallelujah and job went through a lot of pains and lot of sorrows and mental anguish and all the chapters that we read from chapter 3 onwards till chapter 38 we see all the anguish that is going through all that his friends were speaking against him praise the lord when you are going through mental anguish you don't need advice you need people to come and comfort you speak kind words to you praise the lord to say kind words to you but he could not find that from his wife from his friends and he was sitting there troubled anguished depressed he wanted to die but he couldn't die he was praying to god god kill me but that also was not happening praise the lord maybe you have been praying such prayers also but i must say you i must tell you that god is there to strengthen you this day praise the lord and as david says in psalm 16 my flesh also will rest in hope it is not only his mind he says that my flesh also will rest in hope when you go to second chronicles uh, first chronicles chapter 29 there david again he is praying in the presence of god and in verse 15 one chronicles chapter 29 verse 15 he says for we are aliens and pilgrims before you as were all our fathers our days on earth are as, as shadow and without hope praise the lord this man who lived very close to god who was after god's heart he went through a lot of anguish in his life he had problems in his life too he had problems from you know his superiors like king saul he had so many problems he had troubles he was persecuted by saul saul tried to kill him 21 times just think about it he was always after him to take his life hallelujah 
He did not find comfort from his children also. Some of them were totally against him. We read about Absalom who wanted to be king in his place. He may try to do that. Praise the Lord. There were other things. There are other people who were, you know, after his life, they wanted to destroy him, bring him down. There were many times that he had to run to, you know, escape to the forest, hide there in caves. But then God is a God of restoration. That is what I want to tell you this morning. If you are, you know, feeling hopeless this morning, Jesus is your hope. God is your hope. The Holy Spirit will renew your hope. That is what God wants to tell you this morning. We are aliens and pilgrims before you. We must realize that, you know, all that we see, all that we are experiencing in this life is temporary. Wherever you are, you know, maybe you don't have a permanent house. You are not a build, built a house for yourself. Now, that may be the desire of your heart that you may build a house and you stay with your family in that house, but that is not coming into, you know, fulfillment. But then God is with you. He is with you and He knows what you are going through, the mental anguish that you are going through. And as David says here, remember that you are aliens and pilgrims. Praise the Lord. Just passing through this life, we are just passing through this world and all the things that you see, it all will be changed and God will bring about a new heaven and a new earth. That is what the Bible says. All that we see will be destroyed. Destroyed by fire is what Peter writes in his letter. As were all our fathers. Think about our fathers. We do not even know who our fathers were. You know, we may know our father and our grandfather. But above that, we do not know where we have come from. Praise the Lord. For heaven is a place where all our questions will be answered. We will know everything clearly. Hallelujah. There will be so many questions that are not answered in this life of ours. Many problems that do, that do not go away easily. You have to wait years together to get an answer from God. And we do not know why it happens like that. But God still loves you. And that is what we can always understand from the word of God. That God still loves you and cares for you. And he will not leave you hopeless. And David here says, as we are all our fathers, our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. Praise the Lord. The same David who says that my flesh shall rest in hope. He says that, you know, our days on earth are as a shadow and without hope. So every believer goes through these phases where you feel hopeless and then you are filled with hope and there are a lot of, you, you can rejoice in the Lord and you have peace and comfort in your heart. Then you go to a stage where, you know, you feel that everything is gone, devastated. Praise the Lord. He may be in a wilderness experience like Moses was for 40 years. He had enjoyed everything in Egypt and finally he landed up in the land of Midian. Of course, he had a good family there. He had a wife and two sons and all that was good there, but a wilderness experience for 40 years. And God was preparing him for something great to lead his people out of Egypt into the land of Canaan. Canaan. Remember that. So God has a plan and purpose for your life. And many believers live without knowing what is God's plan for their lives. Know what is God's plan for your life and go according to that. Then, you, then only you will find fulfillment in your life. Praise the Lord. If you are feeling like Job this morning, I want to exhort you. I want to comfort you with the word of God which says that, you know, God is there with you. He is there to, he is there to continually lead you and guide you till the time that you step into eternity. Coming to the life of Naomi, we read that they went away from Bethlehem because there was a problem in their lives. They did not have food to eat, so they decided to go to the land of Moab. She and her husband and her two sons, they went to that land. I believe initially things were okay with them, things were good, but then we read that her husband died, Elimelech died. And then Mahalon and Kilion, the sons of Elimelech and Naomi, they married. And they had wives and then we read that both of them died. Only the daughter-in-laws and Naomi were left. Praise the Lord. Let's think about her condition, the anguish that she has to go through. She has lost her husband, lost both her sons. And she has a problem on her hands now. She has two daughter-in-laws. And we read in Ruth chapter 1 and verse 11 onwards, Naomi said, turn back my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there still sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go, for I am too old to have a husband. If I say, if I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband tonight 
and should also bear sons would you wait for them till they were grown and then she says would you restrain yourselves from having husbands no my daughters for it it grieves me very much for your sakes that the hand of the lord has gone out against me you may feel like that this morning that the lord himself is against you praise the lord and something that you know many believers they feel in their lives that god himself is against me when i am trying to pray to god but he is not answering and things are going in the opposite direction things are not working out as much as, as much more i am praying things are going in the wrong direction what shall i do where shall i where should i look for hope or where should i look for an answer and many believers when they go through difficult trials they think you know should i look at somewhere else is this the true thing is jesus really the savior then why is he not helping me it's not only you john the baptist he had a great question because he was in prison and jesus was not delivering him jesus was not setting him free jesus was doing miracles here and there healing many people delivering many people he was you know cleansing lepers and john heard all this in prison and he is thinking why is he not delivering me that's why he sent two of his disciples to jesus and asked him are you the one to come or should we look for someone else praise the lord he is the one who showed jesus to the world behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world and he is in a great despair now that jesus is not delivering him praise the lord and there are many people who have the gift of healing but they are suffering from many diseases and they think there what kind of dilemma is this you know i am going out and praying for other people and they are being set free and they are being healed or they are finding you know deliverance what about me and then you cry out in the presence of god god what about me like paul cried to god three times praise the lord to set him free from that thorn that was there in his flesh but jesus said jesus told him my grace is sufficient for you praise the lord even with that sickness that you are having in your body or weakness that you are having in your body god is still able to do great things through you that is the power of god in in your life praise the lord it's a power that surpasses all understanding that you are suffering and then you are able to deliver other people because you must remember that it is not you but the power of christ that dwells in you the holy spirit who dwells in you who is doing all these things praise the lord hallelujah and naomi here she says the hand of the lord is against me don't call me naomi she said when she reached bethlehem she says call me mara because the lord has made my life bitter and if you are going through that bitterness in your life that that place that you have reached that bitterness that you are not able to enjoy anything even though you have things you are not able to enjoy remember that christ has not forsaken you jesus has not forsaken you as david says i have said the lord always before me the first thing that you know that comes should that should come to your mind when you wake up every morning is how can i please jesus this morning how can i please my god how can i please my savior what can i do for you praise the lord and that is the question that keeps you know occupying your mind at all times then though weeping may come it will last only for a night but then you will have joy in the morning praise the lord remember that because you have kept the lord always before you because he is at your right hand you will not be shaken like david says and now me she said what shall i do the lord has made my life bitter god did not tell her to go to moab but she says this has happened in my life bitterness has come into my life and then god has to devise a plan to remove all that bitterness praise the lord so what of bitterness you have this morning i tell you that god is able to remove all that bitterness praise the lord he is able to bring you know beauty out of ashes that's our god that's our lord jesus christ he can do that in your life remove all that bitterness and you may pray to god god remove all this bitterness from my life but it's not going away there may be some sin in your life the man righteousness in your life that you are praying to god god take this away let it go away but it's not going it has to be a supernatural miracle god will do in your life he himself can do it he can remove that whatever it is even if it is fear in your heart regarding things regarding your future regarding the future of your children he can remove that fear fear from your heart praise the lord 
because he is god almighty he can do great and wondrous things in your life and now god he devises a plan to remove all the bitterness that is there in naomi's life how can he do it she is not going to marry again praise the lord and then she gives permission to her daughter in law to go and get married again but we see that one of the daughter in laws comes and stays with her and god had a great and wonderful plan for her life praise the lord hallelujah and god has a wonderful plan and purpose for each one of our lives and when we walk closely with him knowing what that plan is he will bring it into fulfillment and god had a plan to make to take away all the bitterness in naomi's life that's how hallelujah we know that ruth and boa and obey they came together and they had a child and when the child was given into naomi's hands all the bitterness in her life went away praise the lord so god has a plan and purpose uh, this this morning god speaks about bitterness so there is bitterness i had not prepared it and brought but god god will remove that bitterness that is there or that hopelessness that is there the despair that is there the dip- depression that is there in your life the anxiety that there is in your life the fears that are there in your life supernaturally he will do it praise the lord because he is almighty god he is el shaddai he is able to do all those things he is able to give the joy that is there in his presence into your life many people have lot of artificiality in their lives artificiality you know even even when they praise god or they pray it's all artificial prayers or artificial praising it's not coming from the heart have you ever thought about it does it come does your worship come from the heart praise the lord if the worship comes from your heart then god you know re- really is glorified praise the lord even when you say a single praise the lord if it comes from the depths of your heart and you're worshiping him like that praise the lord he is glorified he finds it's like that the aroma that arose from noah when he offered the sacrifices after coming out of the ark you know it's a in a sweet smelling aroma in the presence of god so our worship our you know praising god and our sacrifices whatever we do praying to god it should be a sweet smelling aroma in the presence of god praise the lord hallelujah in that god is glorified in that god takes pleasure and god changes everything in naomi's life the bitterness he takes away you know when he does that miracle for her and then people started saying naomi has a child praise the lord it was ruth who had the child but we read that people were saying naomi has a child god took away all that bitterness that was there in her life and gave her joy when she looked at the child all the bitterness went away all the grief that she had accumulated over the years now some people you know accumulate grief over the years again the holy spirit is speaking this morning he's saying all the grief that you have accumulated over the years you now layer by layer layer by layer one problem after another one one uh, you know the pains that have come into your life it's like a sword that has gone through your heart praise the lord all these has collected over the years and is a big pile which you are not able to remove by yourself but god is able to just you know wash away all those things and give you joy from his presence and peace that surpasses all understanding praise the lord that only comes from him it's a supernatural thing and he will do it for you it's his promise to you that you know whatever grief that you are going through or you have accumulated over the years he will just take it away that whole burden he is able to take it away the lift the burden you know what that means cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you you may have done it a hundred times lord i give you my burdens lord i give you my burdens if you are praying that prayer for the hundred time that means the burden has not gone you are still carrying that burden if you have been praying the same thing again and again and again that means that burden is not gone it is still there if you pray you should see a result for it isn't it praise the lord but god is able to do that in your life he is able to just remove that burden and fill you with his joy now some of the enemies they do many things in people's life as we see in the book of esther we read in esther chapter 9 now in the 12th month verse 1 on words now in the 12th month that is the month of adar 
on the 13th day the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed we know the plans of haman and what he had tried to do to destroy god's people not only esther and mordecai his only concern was mordecai but we see that all these people got involved in that esther mordecai and all the jews he wanted to kill all of them and he had passed a decree regarding that maybe you are going through some court cases but i tell you that you know, god is able to remove all those things people who are oppressing you he is able to you know move them away and he is able to set you free now the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed that means on this day on the 13th day of the 12th month it was written by the king and sealed by his seal that all the jews should be killed but that, what did the lord do he did a great miracle he just turned it he can overturn everything that the enemy is trying to do just take it for your life if there is a court case against you or people are oppressing you in any way god can turn the whole thing upside down on that day that the enemies of the jews had hoped to overpower them the opposite occurred this is what the bible says the opposite occurred and in that the jews themselves overpowered those who hated them now we are not going to do anything against them it is god who is going to work on our behalf as jesus said my father is always working and i too am working praise the lord i want to encourage you this day that god is going to fight your battles as moses told the israelites stand still and see the deliverance that the lord will bring in your life praise the lord sometimes we are not able to stand still we do things we are fidgety and we start doing many things But God says stand still be still and know that I am God you know God always stands on the people who are righteous on their you know who are standing with God who are standing for the truth and we read here the opposite occurred regarding what the enemies of the Jews had planned and the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them the Jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the provinces of king Ahasuerus to lay hands on those who sought their harm and no one could withstand them because fear of them fell upon all people praise the lord we don't go out and do things and harm people and you know devise plans against them we get on our knees and pray to god and god will do great things for us praise the lord that's how the bible you know it tells us pray for your enemies pray for those who persecute you because god is going to deal with them and then you will see the work of god the hand of god coming upon their lives and the magicians of egypt they said this is the finger of god praise the lord this is the hand of god they said and god will make that evident in the life of the people who are troubling you praise the lord if you go back to the book of job and chapter 14 and verse 7 onwards job in his, in his lamentations he says for there is a there is hope for a tree here he compares you know there is hope for a tree but there is no hope for man he is saying here there is hope for a tree if it is cut down that it will sprout again and that its tender shoots will not cease though its root may be it may grow old in the earth and its stump may die in the ground yet listen to this yet at the scent of water it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant praise the lord he is saying that you know there is hope for a tree if it is cut down what is a hope for a tree that is cut down it doesn't even have roots it's just lying there and it dies he will says but he says that though its root may grow old in the earth and the stump may die yet at the scent of water that is what god does in our life he who believes in me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water praise the lord it is not only in our lives but in the life of other people that this river of living waters flow the holy spirit flows into the life of other people and brings healing brings deliverance bring comfort bring peace in their lives hallelujah at the scent of water the scent of water it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant even though it is cut down you may feel that you are cut down you know in all ways from your family you have become alone you have cut down no one is there with you you are alone you feeling very lonely but the lord is with you the lord can do great things through you sometimes you go through 
that phase of loneliness because God wants to build you up. He wants to make you strong. He wants to make you a leader. He wants, you know, to do great things through you in the lives of other people. If you have not gone through all these things, how are you going to be strong? If you don't, if you have not gone through a sickness, how will you know what sickness is and what healing is? Praise the Lord. If you have not gone through financial problems, how will you know what a person, you know, when a person is going through poverty, how does he feel? What is he going through? Praise the Lord. So some of the things that we go through in our lives is just to make us, God is teaching us several things, to build us up in our ministry, to take us into the next stage of our ministry, to make us more strong. Praise the Lord at the scent of water. When you read the word of God, when you pray in the presence of God, when you praise him, when you worship him in tongues, suddenly God will bring about a healing in your life. Suddenly God will bring about a deliverance in your life. Wait for that moment because God will take you to that moment where he brings about that deliverance, brings about that healing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Be, be strengthened by the word of God this morning because the God who restored Job and gave back everything to him double, he is able to do that in your life too. He is able to restore everything. You may think that I have lost so much. I have invested, I have lost. I have invested, I have lost. But God is able to, you know, change all that and lead you into success and lead you into flourishing in whatever you are doing. And go to Psalm 1, which tells about you know, a person who will be blessed. In everything that he touches, it will be blessed, it says. It's a very simple formula that is written in Psalm 1. In it. Praise the Lord. In everything that he does, he meditates on his word day and night. And separates himself, consecrates himself to God. And does what God, God is pleasing to God. And then the psalmist says that he will be like a tree that is planted by the streams of waters. Praise the Lord. In all that he does, he will flourish. He will prosper is what someone says. And as David says, I have set the Lord always before me. What is before you? What is at your right hand? Is God at your right hand? Is Jesus at your right hand? You shall not be moved. And your flesh will surely rest in hope. When you come to the Psalms, there are many Psalms which speak about hope. This morning we will meditate a few of them. Psalm 33 and verse 18 onward. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. And those who hope in his mercy cry out to God, God. I hope in your mercy. Have mercy on me and my family. That is the best prayer that you can pray any day. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on my family. Have mercy on my church. Have mercy on the people who are there in my church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there may be times there where you have cried out. You know, all the tears. All through the night you have cried. Or maybe in the past few days you have cried. But God will answer your tears. And He will answer your weeping. Because his eye is on those who fear him and those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. And the psalmist, he sings and says, Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Praise the Lord. It's not what you read in the papers. Our trust is not in that. Our trust is in God. Our trust is in Jesus. Our trust is in the Holy Spirit of God, our counselor, our comforter. Don't speak like the world speaks. Praise the Lord. Don't speak what the, what the papers are saying. Don't speak what you read on the internet. Speak about what the word of God says. And then your hope will be renewed and you will find strength for yourselves. Psalm 42 verse 5, Psalm 42 verse 11, Psalm 43 verse 5. It all says the same thing. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, hope in God, hope in God. All these three verses, they say the same thing. For I shall yet praise God, praise Him for the help of His countenance. For I shall yet praise Him, the help of my countenance and my God. All these three verses exhort us to hope in the Lord. Think about Hagar who was in the wilderness 
with a smile a 16 17 year old child son was going to die they don't have any possessions anymore when they were with abraham they had everything but in a moment everything was taken away from her she didn't have a house anymore she didn't have a family anymore she didn't have food to eat except for what abraham had given her that morning and just a little bit of water there in the wilderness god saw her praise the lord god sees us and that's why hagar named god you are the god who sees me praise the lord and god keeps watching over us day and night day and night day and night he is keeping his eyes over those who fear him and those who call out him those who trust in him and hope in his mercy praise the lord hallelujah so never give up on praying never give up on reading the word and meditating on the word of god never give up on worshiping the lord because you know at any time god can bring the deliverance in your life praise the lord and you come to the book of acts we read about the apostle paul and all that he went through praise the lord and he had two desires and he was caught in between these two desires it is he says that it is better for me to die and go be, be with the lord and then he had another desire to live and be a blessing to other people praise the lord what would you choose he saying for me you know to living is living is like being with there for christ and for dying is gain because that was the greatest ultimate blessing that he would receive in his life if he died he could be with christ and everything would be solved there were no more problems to be there but he says that but for you all it is better for me to be in the flesh see there are many people who are depending on you though you may think that there is no one you know thinking about such things there are people who are dependent on you you have to think about those people praise the lord you have you have been a blessing to so many people and god's intention is that you may be a blessing to them in the future also so always keep that in your mind that god has called you to be a blessing to many people and that was one of the blessings that god gave abraham isn't it he said you are going to be a blessing to many nations praise the lord so as you have been a blessing to many people god expects you to do that in the future also he wants you to be a blessing to many people when you come to the book of acts paul says that it better me better for me to die and be with the lord but then for your sake i will go on living you know in my flesh so that i can be a blessing to many people even though i am suffering so many things even though i have to make so many sacrifices praise the lord sacrifice is another thing that sometimes we make and then we may not find the fruit of those sacrifices you are not gaining anything you are losing 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 praise the lord but remember that god doesn't forget anything that you do for others or for the kingdom of god everything is accounted for even if you give a glass of cold water to someone the bible says that you will receive the reward for it we are not doing it for the reward but god sees and he will reward it is his time he will reward when the time comes now paul he was traveling to rome and there were so many unbelievers with him in this ship that he was traveling in a few believers were there we know about luke who was writing acts and there were other few other believers with him and they were traveling and they went through a great storm the euroclydon as we read there in acts chapter 27 and he says because verse 18 and because we were exceedingly tempest tossed sometimes you know tempest tossed in your life the next day they lightened the ship on the third day we threw the ship's tackle overboard with our own hands and when neither the sun nor the stars appeared for many days and no small tempest beat on us all hope that we would be saved was finally given up praise the lord luke writes that we gave up all hope because there was no deliverance coming from any direction there was no one coming to help them praise the lord but then still god did a great miracle there isn't it they landed on the island of malta and god had a great ministry for paul there for three months and later we read that paul went to rome and he was there for two years he was in house arrest but he was still preaching the word teaching the word 
God's word is not shackled at any moment. Praise the Lord. So though we may go through many problems, God has a solution to all that. He will deliver you. That is his promise this day. He says that he will lift that burden that you have been carrying for so long. Lift those griefs that you have been carrying for so long. Lift the fears that you have been carrying for so long. I want to tell you something also this morning that you have to quieten your heart and humble it like a little child in God's presence. Praise the Lord. As David writes in one of his psalms, sang, sings in one of his psalms, I have quietened my soul, I humbled my soul. Like a little child, like a child that is weaned. Praise the Lord. And when you do that, you will see God removing all the burdens. You will see God you know, removing all the fears from your lives, all the grief that you have collected over the years. Praise the Lord. I just go through one small passage and then we will pray. Romans chapter 4. And Paul writes to the Romans and he says from verse 17 onwards, Abraham had a great promise. He says, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of him who believed, whom he believed. God, remember, always remember this verse, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as those, those they, though they did. Praise the Lord. That is what God does. He gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. And this morning, you may be here for this meeting without any hope. And the Bible says, regarding Abraham, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. If God has spoken something over your life, he has promised something over your life, he will bring it into fulfillment. Praise the Lord. Because he is a, he is a God who keeps his covenant. He is a God who keeps his word. And not being in being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that he who had promised, he was also able to perform. This morning, take that promise with you as you go that he who has promised he is able to perform what he has promised in your life. Praise the Lord. So let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who is promised is faithful. Praise the Lord. God has given us, given us a living hope. It's not a dead hope. Remember that. It's not a dead hope that God has given us. Because of the Holy Spirit who is inside of us, he keeps renewing our hope day by day by day. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Therefore, and verse 13 it says, Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be revealed, that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. All that we see now, all the sorrows that we go through now, all the pains, sufferings, sicknesses, is only for a small, a short period of time. It's not that everything we will receive in eternity, here also God will bring healing, He will bring deliverance in our life. But the ultimate blessing of our life is when we die and then our bodies are resurrected and be with God forever and ever. And or also, if Jesus comes in the clouds at rapture and be joined with Him, we will be with him forever. Praise the Lord. God loves you. I want to tell you this morning, God loves you and he cares for you. Cast all your burdens upon him for he really cares for you. May God bless you with his thoughts this day. Praise the Lord. Loving Heavenly Father, we come into your holy presence once again this morning. Thank you for blessing us together as we worshipped you, O Lord, and as we meditated on your word and interceded for each other, O Lord. Thank you that you are watching over all of us, O oh Lord, this morning. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness, your love upon all our lives, O oh Lord. And as David sang, O oh Lord, let us focus on you at all times, O oh Lord. Like he says, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. I have kept the Lord always before me. Thank you for the hope that you have given us through Jesus Christ. 
And thank you for the hope that the Holy Spirit keeps renewing in us each and every day, O oh Lord. I pray for each and every brother and sister in Christ this morning that you may bless them, O oh Lord. And whatever burdens and fears and uh, despair that they are going through in their lives, O oh Lord, that you may lift that burden this morning as we pray together. Now, O oh Lord, we pray that that burden may be lifted from their hearts, that you may grant them peace and joy that comes from your presence, O oh Lord. We pray for each and every person here, for their families, for their ministries, O oh Lord, and all that they have, O oh Lord. Let it all be protected by the blood of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. We pray for each and every prayer request once again, that, O oh Lord, that you may answer those prayers, because we have prayed in your presence together, O oh Lord, and your word says that when two of you agree, Regarding anything here on earth, it shall be done by my Father in heaven, O Lord. We ask you, Jesus, to fulfill that promise this morning, O Lord. Whether it's healing or whether it's deliverance or whether it is things concerned with our ministries or, or our family lives, O Lord. Everything, O Lord, you are able to solve each and every problem of our lives, O Lord. And we give you glory for that. We pray for the meeting that will be held on the 24th, O Lord. Even this morning, we place that meeting into the hands of your Holy Spirit, that he may bring it into fulfillment, O Lord, and that everything may go wonderfully well, O Lord, as you have conducted all these meetings, O Lord, in the past many months, more than a year, O Lord. We pray that your blessings may rest upon that meeting too, and every person that comes to that meeting may be blessed, O Lord. As we depart this morning, O Lord, let your presence go with us and give us rest. Help us to pray for each other, O Lord. And continue interceding, O Lord, not only for ourselves, our families, for our cities, for nations, O Lord, and also for your coming. Pray, O Lord, that your Holy Spirit may prepare each one of us, O Lord, for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, O Lord. Help us to be found faithful, O Lord, and live lives that are pleasing to you, O Lord. Let your name be glorified in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.